All right, kids and youth and Sunday school teachers, come on up and be with, wait. Now when I normally call you up on the chancel, we're in the sanctuary, it's Sunday morning and it's around 11 o'clock. This isn't exactly the church and I'm not exactly on the chancel, but I'm calling the whole church family together so we can have some time together. Are you worried? Are you worried, Nora? Yeah, I am. I wonder if some of the worries in our house sound a little like some in yours. Nora, what's on your mind? Mine is, when will we go back to school? One I'm hearing a lot is, when can I have a play date? Another one of mine is, how long will this last? And then finally, I think we can all agree that one of the biggest worries we have is this one. When will all this worrying stop? One of my favorite books about worrying is by one of my favorite authors, Wimberly Worried. I thought I'd read it. Wimberly worried about everything. Big things. I wanted to make sure you were still here. And little things. Mama, what if I shrink? And things in between. Wimberly worried in the morning, she worried at night, and she worried throughout the day. You worry too much, said her mother. When you worry, I worry, said her father. Worry, 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 said her grandmother. Too much worry. At home, Wimberly worried about the tree in the front yard. What if it falls on our house? And the crack in the living room wall, what if it gets bigger and something comes out of it? And the noise the radiators made, Shh, what if there's a snake inside? At the playground, Wimberly worried about the chains on the swings and the bolts on the slide and the bars on the jungle gym. And always she worried about her doll, Petal. Shouldn't Petal have a car seat too? Oh, Petal's lost forever. I found her, sweetie. I'll wait for you, Petal. Don't worry, said her mother. Don't worry, said her father. But... Wimberly worried. She worried and worried and worried. When Wimberly was especially worried, she rubbed Petal's ears. Wimberly worried that if she didn't stop worrying, Petal would have no ears left at all. On her birthday, Wimberly worried that no one would come to the party. See, her mother said, there was nothing to worry about. But then Wimberly worried that there wouldn't be enough cake. On Halloween, Wimberly worried that there would be too many butterflies in the neighborhood parade. See, said her father, there was nothing to worry about. But then, Wimberly worried because she was the only one. You worry too much, said her mother. When you worry, I worry, said her father. Worry, 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 said her grandmother. Too much worry. Soon, Wimberly had a new worry, school. Wimberly worried about the start of school more than anything she had ever worried about before. I love school. But by the time the first day arrived, Wimberly had a long list of worries. What if no one else had spots? What if no one else wears stripes? What if no one else brings a doll? What if the teacher is mean? What if the room smells bad? What if they make fun of my name? What if I can't find the bathroom? What if I hate the snack? What? if I have to cry. Don't worry, said her mother. Don't worry, said her father. But Wimberly worried. She worried and worried and worried. She worried all the way there. Have fun, says her grandma. While Wimberly's parents talked to the teacher, Miss Peachum, Wimberly looked around the room. Then Miss Peachum said, Wimberly, there is someone I think you should meet. Her name was Jewel. She was standing by herself. She was wearing stripes. She was holding a doll. Look. At first, Wimberly and Jewel just peeked at each other. This is Petal, said Wimberly. This is Niblet, said Jewel. Petal waved. Niblet waved back. Hi, said Petal. Hi, said Niblet. I rub her ears, said Wimberly. I rub her nose, said Jewel. Throughout the morning, Wimberly and Jewel sat side by side and played together whenever they could. Petal and Niblet sat side by side too. Wimberly worried, but 
no more than usual, and sometimes even less. Before Wimberly knew it, it was time to go home. Come back tomorrow, called Miss Peacham as the students walked out the door. Wimberly turned and smiled and waved. I will, she said. Don't worry. The end. Wimberly was worried about going to a new school, and we can understand that. And some of the worries that we have right now are pretty big ones, and we don't know the answers, and that makes us worry even more. So this morning I thought to myself, well, what do I do with worries? And I think about it, and then I remembered that I could go to God and talk to God about my worries. And then I grabbed my Bible, I started flipping around, and I turned to the Gospel of John because there's a moment when the disciples are trying to figure out how they're going to be together with Jesus, even when Jesus is not there physically with them. And honestly, they don't get it. And they start to worry and their hearts are troubled. Here's what Jesus says to them. Peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Jesus was trying to teach his friends how they could be together even when they were separate. And so I think on this morning, we can think to ourselves about maybe worrying a little less about where we're physically placed and think a little more about how God remains with us even in this moment and how we are still church family operating out of people that care for one another even still in our distance. I send you my love and my peace I give to you. Let's pray. Loving God, sometimes we do worry and sometimes our worries are legitimate. We don't have all the answers, but God, sometimes in those moments we forget that we do know one thing we can do. We can come to you because you draw us in with your grace and with your presence, even in a moment when we have lots of questions. And God, we're looking for a little peace, a little peace in a day with a lot of worries. And so we ask you to take care of us, to provide us with protection, to surround us with love, and to give us a little peace. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.